In this video, we will discuss anterior inferior cerebellar artery syndrome or lateral pontine syndrome, the structures involved in the syndrome, clinical features, investigations, and treatment of the syndrome. So, what's the cause of lateral pontine syndrome? Atherosclerotic, thrombotic, or embolic occlusion of the anterior inferior cerebellar artery. What's the most common cause of the stroke? 85% of the strokes are due to infarction and 15% due to hemorrhage. What's the origin of anterior inferior cerebellar artery. It arises from the basilar artery, posterior inferior cerebellar artery as we already discussed in the other video that arises from the vertebral artery. So what are the branches of the basilar artery? Basilar artery runs in the basilar sulcus which divides the pons into two equal halves. It has three sets of branches, paramedial branches that supply medial one third of the pons and the circumferential branches that supply lateral two third of the pons and the other two arteries the anterior inferior cerebellar artery and superior cerebellar artery. They also arise from the, the basilar artery. So anterior inferior cerebellar and superior cerebellar they arise from basilar artery and posterior inferior cerebellar artery arises from the vertebral artery. This is the superior cerebellar artery and anterior inferior cerebellar arising from the basilar artery and this is posterior inferior cerebellar artery that arises from the vertebral artery. How basilar artery is formed? It is formed by the union of the two vertebral arteries and on the other end it's connected to the circle of villus and to the posterior community communicating arteries. So where is the lesion in anterior inferior cerebellar artery syndrome? The lesion is in the lateral and inferior pons and middle cerebellar peduncle and the cerebellum. This is the middle cerebellar peduncle here and here is the lesion. I colored it. So what are the structures affected by an ICA or the lateral pontine syndrome? One brain structure cerebellum and the middle cerebellar peduncle. Two tracks, one descending and the one ascending track. One descending sympathetic track and one ascending spinothalamic tract and four cranial nerves that arise from the pond trigeminal abdicent facial and the vestibulocochlear nerve so what are the clinical features of the lateral pontine syndrome clinical feature depends on the extent of the lesion and its structures damage TIA in basilar artery or its branch occlusion are short-lived and they last for 5 to 30 minutes TIAs occur several times a day why because of the intermittent obstruction to the blood flow. Multiple TIAs want an impending infarct that is going to block the blood vessel. What's the difference in TIA of basilar artery or its branch occlusion? TIA of basilar artery occlusion is bilateral and TIA of basilar artery branch occlusion is unilateral. So the clinical features are in the cerebellum causes ipsilateral ataxia in upper and lower limb. The two tracts involved descending sympathetic tract involved causes Horner syndrome ipsilateral meiosis and hydrosis and ptosis and the ascending spinothalamic involvement causes contralateral loss of pain and temperature on body surface shown in the brown hair loss of pain and temperature due to damage to spinothalamic tract and in the cranial nerve involvement cranial nerve 5 trigeminal nerve involvement causes loss of pain and temperature on the ipsilateral side of the face because it's a sensory to the face so ipsilateral loss of pain and temperature on the face due to cranial nerve 5 involvement and contralateral loss of pain and temperature on the body due to spinothalamic involvement. Cranial nerve 6 abducent nerve supplies the lateral rectus muscle causes abduction of the ipsilateral eye and it is connected to the medial rectus component of the oculomotor nerve via the medial longitudinal fasciculus. So it causes contraction of the medial rectus and adducts the opposite or the contralateral eye. So a lesion in the abducent nucleus causes loss of horizontal case. Cranial nerve 7 facial nerve damage causes ipsilateral facial nerve paralysis ipsilateral facial weakness lower motor neuron type of flaccid paralysis. There is loss of taste on the anterior two-third of the tongue. What's the taste on the posterior one-third of the tongue? That is the glossopharyngeal nerve, the ninth cranial nerve. There is loss of lacrimation and salivation, loss of corneal reflex because facial forms the efferent limb of the blinking reflex. It also supplies stapedius muscles in the inner ear. So what's the effect of the stapedial paralysis? It causes hyperacusis. So what's the function of stapedius? It closes the oval window in a 
loud sound to protect the inner ear. Also, there is drooping of the eyelid due to paralysis of the orbicularis oculi muscle and drooping of the lip due to paralysis of the orbicularis oris muscle. Cranial nerve 8, vestibulo cochlear nerve involvement causes deafness, tinnitus, dizziness, vertigo, nausea, vomiting, diplopia, and nystagmus. Vestibulo cochlear nerve is connected to the third, fourth, and sixth cranial nerve via medial longitudinal fasciculus. So, a lesion in this nerve causes horizontal and vertical case palsy. The investigation and treatment of the stroke. CT scan differentiates ischemic stroke from the hemorrhagic stroke. When does a CT scan become positive? A small infarctions are difficult to visualize by CT scan with large ischemic strokes. CT abnormalities are usually evident after 24 to 48 hours hours, not immediately. CT scan can detect hemorrhages, subarachnoid hemorrhages, aneurysms, tumors, and abscesses. MRI is more sensitive for a small infarct in all areas of the brain, including cortex and brain stem. Diffusion-weighted MRI have high sensitivity for identifying ischemic stroke within minutes after the onset. What's the MRI funding in infarction? In ischemia, there occurs poor perfusion only with no other abnormalities that is seen in MRI. What's the advantage of a scan over MRI? A scan is done quickly and it has a wide availability. There is claustrophobia for MRI in the patients and MRI is less sensitive than a scan for blood product. Angiography is the gold standard for identifying atherosclerotic stenosis. It excludes the aneurysms reveals vascular occlusions and the tissues at a risk of infarction. Angiography can also identify vasospasm, intraluminal thrombi, fibromuscular dysplasia, and AV fistula. Treatment of the ischemic stroke generally its medical support, thrombolysis, antiplatelet agents, anticoagulants, and neuroprotection. Manitol to reduce cerebral edema, but hypovolemia should be prevented by giving isotonic fluid. Blood pressure should not be lowered precipitously. Why? Because it precipitates ischemia. Very combinant tissue plasminogen activator is for ischemic stroke, and the contraindications to the tissue plasminogen activators are head injury in the past three months, GI bleeding in the past three weeks, recent MI, coma or stupor, or platelet count of less than 100,000, hematocrit less than 25%, or a glucose less than 50 or more than 400 mg per 100 ml.